we're going to have a look at this question together and you might have some kind of memories from we did a very similar style of question but with logarithmic functions back when we were doing exponentials and logs so we're going to sort of work our way through this and i want to point out a few things not just in your answer but in how we set it out okay so let's have a start they provide you with this function y equals 10 to x and then the first task is i'm looking for a tangent okay one of the things i hope you remember is that when we are dealing with trigonometric functions, we have these two different kinds of units we can put in, right? You could put degrees, you could put radians. Now what you will find is that in all of these questions where there's a derivative of a trigonometric function involved, you will see these x equals pi on 8 business, right? This is in radians. Now this is a really important note to make, in fact if you've got another colour, then highlight this and make, it, you know, make a big song and dance about it, okay? Whenever you are in the world of calculus and doing trigonometry, okay, in calculus we are always dealing in radians, always in radians. So let's just highlight that. You guys know if you reach for your calculator right now, um, I'd love you actually to pull it open. And one of the things you'll notice is, you know, you can change the mode of your calculator from degrees to radians. And if you do something like say sine 30, and you hit equals, right? The calculator will do radically different things based on whether you're in radians or degrees. Just a quick show of hands. Open your calculator up, don't fiddle with it. Whose calculator is currently in degrees? Hands up. The vast majority of you, okay, thank you, hands down. Um, some of you might be in radians already, and if you're not, we're gonna change shortly, but for those of you who just raise your hand, when you see sine 30 and you press equals, what does your calculator tell you? it tells you a half because sine of 30 degrees, this is like one of those important exact values, sine of 30 degrees is a half, it's really easy to remember. However, if you now go ahead, change the mode of your calculator, change it into radians, and then I want you to do exactly the same thing. I want you to type in sine 30. Now it'll give you something weird, right? I actually don't know what it's gonna give you. Can someone tell me? Yeah. Negative 0.98. 8-8? Eight, eight? Oh, yeah, 9-8. Eight, eight. Okay, you're sure. Thank you. Hmm? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Now, the reason why you're getting these different results, of course, is that this is now saying sine of 30 radians. Sine of 30 radians. So, rather than 30 degrees, can you do me a favor, guys? Put your pens down. Can you make a 30 degree angle roughly between your hands? Tell me what you think that looks like. I just want to see. Can you hold it up for me as well? I just want to see. Okay. Very good. All right. Now, have a think about this. What would 30 radians look like in comparison to this? Yeah, we're, we're in trouble right now. I, can, you, can you do that again? What did you, you did something with your hands that kind of like said. Correct, so when we think in radians, right, a full revolution is how many radians? Two, two pi, which is 6.28, right? So if this was some multiple of 6.28, that's how many times it goes around a full circle. Hence Keegan doing that weird thing with his hand, okay? So eventually it spins round and round and round, whatever, four or five times, and it winds up here. Strange, but okay. Now, this is important. I want you to go back to, in fact, I hope some of you stuck it in. When we were introducing the trigonometric derivatives, like a couple of lessons back, right? What did I hand you? I handed you something that we measured. What was it? It, it was the sine graph, right? And now look at the scale. And I highlighted this right at the start, but I'm highlighting it again now. It's in radians, right? And we measured, we were like, oh, this gradient is one. This gradient is 0 0.5. If it was all in degrees, the scale would be totally off. So every trigonometric derivative you will encounter, it's always in radians. Sometimes they make it super obvious, like here x equals pi on 8, you're like, oh, obvious radians. But other times, it's not obvious. You can know it'll always be in those units. All right, where did I put my marker? Here it is. That was a bit of a prelude. Now let's actually go to work, right? To get the derivative, sorry, to get the gradient of the tangent, we need the derivative, right? So can someone help me out with dy on dx? What are we going to get in this case? Very good. 2 sec squared. Now what comes next? In the back of your mind, you might be doing chain rule, right? This thing here is the U, as it were, okay? Now the components that you've got are, here's the U dash, tan turns into sec squared, the next thing that happens is you put back U. So it should just be 2x. Whatever was there comes along for the ride. Does that make sense? 
Girls, are you right? Are you looking for someone? You okay? We had a room change, so yeah. Thank you. Oh, good. All right, now, we have a derivative. This is a gradient function. What am I going to do with it? Yeah, go ahead, Keegan. Yeah, fantastic. I think I heard it on the front as well. Okay. Um, this x value is going to go into there, and that will give us the gradient at a particular point. So I'm going to say at x equals pi on 8, m, there's my gradient, equals, and I'm just going to go ahead, right? 2 sec squared, that 2x will become pi on 4. So far, so good. Now, of course, your calculator does not have a sec button on it. It's 1 over cos. So it might be helpful for you to say, oh, this is 2 on cos squared, pi on 4. You could punch this into your calculator, but I think we can do a little bit better than that. Not just, well, you'll see why in a second. Cos pi on 4, that's cos of 45 degrees. This is another one of those exact Values. Does anyone know what cos of pi on 4 is off the top of their head? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, one, over root two. 1 over root 2. Very good. So I've got 2 over 1 on root 2 squared. You can see that squared, that squared. So far, so good? So what I've got here is 2 divided by... It's been squared, so it's a half. What's the answer I'm getting at? This is 4. This is a gradient, apparently. Okay. Now, just before I go any further, let's just have a think, does this make sense? This is the graph I'm interested in. Y equals 10, 2x. I want you to have a mental image of this graph. We're about to draw it, actually. I'm pretty sure the question asks us to shortly. What does 10x look like? Forget about the 2 for a second. Can you, with your hand, I'll give you a clue. It starts from the origin. What does 10x do? It just kind of... It goes up and it just gets steeper and steeper and steeper. Why does it get so steep? It goes toward a asymptote, right? So it just kind of skyrockets like that, okay? Now, what does that 2 in there do? It actually makes it... It's really tricky, right? This one actually makes it even steeper. It compresses it. So if you want to use the language of dilation that you might remember from last year, this is actually... The way I think about it is... Don't worry about drawing this for now. We'll draw a full version later. We would normally say from 0 to 2 pi, this is how much of the tan curve you would get. That's how much you would reach at the end of 2 pi. Now this 2 means you get twice as much of it, right? So in fact, you get this and then you get it again from 0 to 2 pi. So it's like all squashed in. Does that make sense? So in other words, like you told me it was quite steep. When I squash it in, it's going to get even steeper. Hence, this is a pretty steep gradient. Make sense? Always so important. You get a result. Don't just walk off. Do a sense check on it and see if it's reasonable. Okay, what am I going to do with this? I've just gotten to M. That's not the answer. Where do I put it? Yeah, I'm looking for a point gradient. When I'm looking for a tangent, I've got a gradient. I've got half of a point right here. So how do I get the other half? Yeah, Rishi. Yeah, now I put x into, but where do I put it in? I've already put it in here. I'm now going to have to put it into, yeah, the original one. Can you go ahead and tell me once you put that in, what y equals? Hello, girls. Uh, can Daniel and Christian please go to the lecture theater? Daniel and Christian. Lecture theater now, does it say who it's from? Okay. Or okay, no worries. Curse you people who are excellent swimmers. Daniel, did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you, you don't seem to be in a hurry to like get moving. <laughs> okay. Wait, is Christian. Yeah, you. Well, do you guys want to go together? I'll, um, I'll finish this off and then we can um, see how far you guys can get. Has someone got a Y value for me? Anyone? <laughs> it's 10 of pi on 4. 45 degrees, that's one. It's another one of these exact values. So I've got that. Here's an x, here's a y. So now I'm going to put this into, as suggested, point gradient form. Yeah. Oh, great question. So when you put in the x value, do you put it in radians or degrees? This whole world that we're living in at the moment, it's like I'm in, I'm in calculus town. Right? So it's a little bit like, you know, you go to a new part of the world, you're like, are we metric or imperial here? It's like similar kind of thing with calculus. So make sure you're in radians for everything. Okay? 
All right, has anyone already got ahead of me? The um, tangent is going to be y minus y1, so which is, which is 1. And then what do I get on the right-hand side? M. M, which in this case is 4. And x minus x1, which was provided right at the beginning. So it's pi on 8. Strictly speaking, that is the equation, but we could tidy it up a little bit, right? What are we going to get? y equals, over here, 4x, take away pi on 2, and then I'll add 1 to get it all over here on the right-hand side, okay? All right, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Let's have a look at what P, P, B asks us to do. We're looking for two intercepts, right? So this is part B. Now, one of the advantages of writing it in this form is that one of the intercepts is just sitting right there. You don't have to do any work. Which intercept is it? It's the y-intercept, right? There it is, right there. Okay, that's the y-intercept. So, you just kind of get that one for free. How do I get the x-intercept out of it? Yeah, I'll let y equal to zero. Here it is, over here. And then I want to make x the subject. So, whoops, wrong color. When I work that out, has anyone already got there? I will let y equal zero, like so. You could do it anywhere that you like, but if I do it, say, here, I've got 4 outside of x minus pi on 8 equals negative 1. Divide through by 4, and then I'm going to add to both sides. So I guess that would be pi on 8. You satisfied with that? I mean, you may have put it into here. We should hopefully get the same answer. Yeah? There's the x-intercept. There's the y-intercept. Now, I want to see how far you can get on this sketch. I already kind of gave you a little bit of a leg up. This is what tan x roughly looks like. You don't need to draw the whole thing, just a small part of it. Sketch it and then see if you can come up with the particular triangle that they're after. There's an area that they want us to calculate, okay? Let me give you a minute to work on your own, off you go.